So by now you should know how to memorize and execute the centers, and you should know how to memorize and execute the wings. And you're about to learn the corners, it's very, very easy. If you know it, if you know OP already, then you should know it basically. Um, and now we're going to finally put all the pieces together, put together all the centers and the wings and the corners, just look at it as a whole. Now, um, you have kind of an order of tasks for 3x3. Three three. Um, now, I and many other people do, um, they memorize the edges first, then they memorize the corners, and then they quickly solve the corners while they have it in their memo, and then they solve the edges. Um, and other people, like Noah Arthurs, they do it the other way around. They will memorize the corners, then memorize the edges, and then quickly memorize the edges, and then solve the edges, and then solve the corners. Um, honestly, I wish I could have picked that up when I started. But uh, anyway, uh, since there's three pieces, there's a bit of a longer list. And there's actually two different lists. There's a preferred order of tasks, and there's an alternate order of tasks. Now, preferably, this is at least for me. You can you can change this up if you want, if it's better for you. Um, but this is how I do it. Um, after you learn the method methodology, then you can probably figure out another way that's better for you. If there is another way better for you, but excuse me, this is the way I do it. Ugh, excuse me. First, I memorize the centers, then I memorize the wings, and I memorize the corners. And then I execute the corners while I have the corners in my head, because there's you're gonna have much fewer letters for corners than anything else. And then I go and execute the centers and execute the wings. Alternately, I would memorize centers, then wings, then corners, and then I would execute centers first, and then corners, and then wings. And here is why. Uh, now I'm going to get into how the corners are done. It is literally just OP. So. You do the exact same moves, exact same moves. If you want to shoot here or here or here or here or here, there's nothing special about it. Just do Y perms or J perms or whatever. So if you want to shoot here, then just do a Y perm. And then you shot there. I mean, and these two will swap. And you may have parry, but we'll get to that later. Um, the, the main difference, the main difference between 4x4 four four and 3x3 three three corners are on 3x3 three three, a Y perm will only do two important things. It will switch these two corners or these two edges and these two corners or these two corners, whichever way you want to look at it. On the 4x4 four four, it actually does a third thing. It actually does it on the 3x3 three three, but it's not as important. It will actually turn these centers 100 or 9 degrees counterclockwise. So, let me just do a Y perm on this. You can see the Lubix logo. So I'm going to do a Y perm. As you can see the corner, or the center, twisted. And if you do another Y perm, the center has twisted 180 degrees. And if you were to keep doing a third one and a fourth one, it would go back into place. Now, the problem here is, it, if you want to execute the corners first, which is what I prefer, then you need you need to understand that you have memorized these centers already and you don't want them messed up. So unless they are all the same color, then which is highly unlikely, I've never had that, then um you need to be aware of this. Now, like I just demonstrated with the three by three, um basically four Y perms will put it back into place. So if a number of Y perms you do is divisible by four. So if you have four targets or eight targets or God forbid 12 targets, then um, you shouldn't have to worry about anything. And you can just go ahead and execute corners first. Now, if, if you have an even number of targets, but it's not divisible by four. So if you have like six targets, ten targets, uh, fourteen targets, um, then your center will be flipped 180 degrees. And there's an easy fix for that. After you do um, all your cent all your corners, 
after you do all your corner targets and you have an even number but it's not visible by four then you're going to have a 180 degree flipped center then you're just going to do r u r prime u five times the two three four five and as you can see it will twist that center 180 degrees now if you have an odd number of if you have an odd number of targets then there's really nothing of my knowledge you can do so if you have an odd number of center tar if you have an odd number of corner targets then you will have to use this alternate order of tasks execute the centers first so then when you do the odd number you have nothing to mess up so then there's parity which is when you have an odd number of uh, corner targets so not only will it mess up the centers and you will have to execute the centers first but you will have these two edges or edge spaces flipped so personally what I do is I do um, L prime U L and then you set up a um, opposite PLL parity case which you should know or you may know from speed solving so just to clarify what that is in case you are not too much into speed solving um, you're going to do L prime U L and then you're going to do a Y prime I believe it's a Y, yes it's a Y prime and then you're going to do small R2 U2 small R2 U wide 2 small r2 and it's small u2 I had to think about that it'll be in the description like everything else and then you just do a y go back here and just kind of insert that by doing an l prime u prime l so yeah like I said the corners are not that bad um, I just wanted to make this part to put together all the pieces say this is how it's gonna go so basically reviewing. First you're going to memorize the centers and now I know I didn't go over memory methods but um, I assume you have a pretty good memory method for 3x3. Three three. Um, I personally I would not try visual memo for um, at least not at least not for corner or at least not for centers or wings because there's a lot. Maybe for corners. Um, personally I use letters for everything. Um, just go ahead and look up memory methods. Uh, this this tutorial is about the method, how you would obtain the letters, not really about how you would memorize them. I'm leaving that up to you. There are multiple sources of a. Uh, there are multiple sources to find that th kind of thing. So you memorize the centers, and then you memorize the wings, and then you memorize the corners quickly, if you have an even number and then you execute the corners, execute the centers, and then execute the wings. Just like how I've explained how to do those in previous parts. Alternately, you will memorize the same way. If you have an odd number of corner targets, then you should execute the centers first, so those don't get messed up. And then do the corners, and then do the wings. Um, y perms will not mess up any of the wings. I promise you that. So, that really does it for... Um, everything. So I, I basically explain like all the need to know information on how to blind solve a 4x4, which is awesome. Um, so there's going to be a couple more parts. Um, next part I'm going to have one or two example solves. One or two, depending on how long they are. I'd like to have a couple, but we'll see. And the last part will be um, um, tips and tricks and how you can get a little faster at it. So. Yeah, that would be it for this part. Next we'll go into example solves.